To be able to play chamber music, to join a group, to speak the same language, to feel that you are a part of something that is bigger than you, or that is just the feeling of, of getting energy from each other, and not to be strongest yourself, to be um, unindividual, to be a part of something that gives you something. That is quite important and that is for sure the meaning of a festival to, to fill yourself with this. I think lots of energy and lots of creativity can, can be formed in a festival like this. The reason why we chose bread and circus as a theme does not have in particular to do with what the old Romans did in the Colosseum, but it is to show people, because I think it's a common misunderstanding that the greatest works uh, by the classical composers are written because they, you know, touched some divine source of inspiration. And perhaps they always were in contact with this divine source. But most work were composed because someone asked them to do it. And of course this does not have anything to say for the quality of the music, which is of course sublime so many times, but it shows that it was not like they were sitting in their room late at night talking to God, or perhaps they were talking to God, but then in that case somebody asked them to do that first. So, but now in our time, composers has re have returned to the more commissioned side of music writing. And we have excellent things, uh, examples of that in the program. Also in the opening concert, Martin Frist and I performed the Sweet Fantastic by Swedish composer Rolf Martinsson. So then we pulled the string from the 16th, 17th century and to our time and see that still composers are doing the exact same thing.
I play violin since I'm four years old. I come from a very musical background. All of my family are musicians, and my father was a great pianist and teacher and pedagogue. So for me, it was absolutely natural to, to make music since I was really a child. And I found it very strange when I first time went to a school with six years old. I didn't understand that it was not an absolutely usual, normal thing that every child is playing music. So I was very confused. to have a life without music and I, I wouldn't want to even imagine. It's very complex to be a musician because you have to be in a way incredibly disciplined and very calculative in your mind and very clear like in a mathematician almost and then at the same time you also have to be a philosopher in a way. That's where the two different worlds come together a little bit. And so, of course, this is also something why it's so fascinating. have a serious discussion first of the repertoire and the musicians of course and then we have some ensembles and some musicians that also come with suggestions of course what they really want to play because that's the balance always when you have a theme like we have this year with bread and circus we have idea what we really would like to be played and that's always a balance that people also should play what they want to play or what, what they would like to play so we try to combine these two, two wills and um, I'm very happy that we have this kind of level of artists this year.
invite the musicians. And then we slowly start to think about what repertoire we should have. Because you, you can't make everybody immensely happy all the time. Sometimes you need to take risks. Uh, and most of the time, luckily, it works out very well. But you see a little bit where, what kind of training do people have? Where have they studied? What is their favorite repertoire? Uh, and then we try to put together a program with music that should fit the musicians. Because I believe you get the best festival when people can use their strength almost all the time. Antoine Thomas-Dit. And when I heard he was coming, I thought, okay, he must do the Ligeti. He is a fantastic performer himself and has also got fantastic tuition from Tobias Zimmermann in this piece, which was written for her. And when these things happen, when you see an artist and think, ah, oh, he should play this piece, and he actually says yes, that's a wonderful feeling. Zimmermann and when I joined her class as a student in 2001 somehow my first dream was to study with her was to learn from her but secondly I really wanted to study that piece in particular and we have spent about a year on it and in a very beautiful way because I think it's a real masterpiece and a very deep and rich piece um, I made it my own as well, and it was not anymore Tabea Zimmermann's viola sonata of Ligeti, but also a piece that other people could play. Somehow, I became very attached personally to the piece. And I find it's, it's just wonderful because you can reach the, the furthest away worlds that you can imagine. I mean, you go from the most romantic, deep sound to the most violent sounds, um, the most uh, violent virtuosity, actually, to the extreme silence, Ligeti even writes, play even if the notes don't sound and I always feel the last movement is a way to explode, to make the viola explode completely and you really go to the extreme. I mean you have a moment where it's written six times forte, which doesn't exist usually in music and you just pass the maximum of your instrument and somehow it's, it opens new world completely and you reach um, a complete new landscape of sound, even noise, but you don't hear things the same afterwards.
Well, here I am in Stavanger, Norway, uh, with a beautiful day it's been, and um, I haven't been to Stavanger before. I've heard a lot about this chamber music festival, uh, been asked to come, and finally I'm here, and it's very beautiful when the sun is shining. Tonight was my first concert with the Melante Ensemble from the Berlin Philharmonic. They are really good at this uh, Baroque style and I thought we had a lot of fun together preparing the concert and doing it with Bach and various works by Thielemann. I haven't sung Telemann in concert for a long, long time, but it's a composer I started singing when I was really young. So we finished this concert tonight with a sad story about the dead canary bird, and which is actually not as sad as it sounds. It's pretty funny too, because uh, the, the, the bird was eaten by a cat. And so there are some arias that are very angry about uh, hoping that the cat will burst and that the, the little bird will scratch the insides of the cat. <laughs> There's a very beautiful lullaby to, for the dead bird. Mein Kanarine, gute Nacht. Sleep well, little canary. And then it ends very abruptly with um, a text in Plattdeutsch, which is a dialect saying, go to hell, cat. <laughs>
Stavanger Festival is a great, wonderful Norwegian festival, and I think it's a little famous for introducing unusual music to the audience more than many festivals. They are not scared to ask people, ask musicians to play unusual but fantastic music. For instance, I will play a very strange Danish piece for solo piano. It's called Insectarium. It's nine short pieces about insects. <laughs> and it's very, very radical and it uh, calls for musical theater, you knock on the lid of the thing, you, you stretch up your arms and you play on the strings and, and it's very exciting music. Part of my youth I wanted to be an engineer, uh, pl uh, driving a locomotives, <laughs> as every young boy maybe or girl would say. But I really wanted to play the piano, I was very curious about uh, finding new music when I was uh, uh, very young. I felt that the piano was my instrument. I'm very happy that I didn't choose, for instance, any other instrument. No names, but <laughs> I, love, I love the piano and piano music and play with other people. <laughs> ¶¶